you know, free tickets, you know, enticing. All right, Davenport Tracy, let's serving check in. Three, one, 40, 30. I think she knows that there's rain coming sometime soon. She is in a big hurry out here. It only lost one point in this second set till Asagoe was able to hold. Still only about 75 people out here, 100 people. It's tough, at, tough atmosphere to play, but. Yeah, it's really bothered Lindsay so far, huh? Yeah, in 38 minutes, I, she's been so focused. You know, all day long we've been hearing that there aren't going to be that many long dry spells. So, you know, sometimes when you hear something like that or you have a little niggling injury, she doesn't. But sometimes when there's extenuating circumstances, you can really focus and get on with the match. And that's what she's done. She's certainly taking her time here. Make sure she wins this game. All right, let's swing now to the grandstand. The finish from a moment ago, Tracy Austin. Lindsay Davenport is in a real hurry. This match about 45 minutes old. Asagoe not able to give Damn, any resistance whatsoever. So about 8.15 at night. She's been here all day. Glad to get this match out of the way. Get back to her room. Still has a dinner reservation. Exactly. So Have a nice table. early night. You know, a little later than she'd like, but, you know, nonetheless, get the good dinner. Third well, straight year in the U.S. Open semifinals. Well, Lindsay Davenport is in the semifinals of the U.S. Open, defeating Shinobu Asagoe 6-1, 6-1, 46 minutes. Quick work. Did you have some place to go? <laughs> I think I was just sick and tired of waiting all day. What did uh, you do what, to pass the time? You know, I got here around 9.15, 9.20, and pretty much got to warm up. It looked like we might go on at 11, 11.15, and we were about two minutes from walking on when it started raining again, and pretty much spent the day, um, you know, hanging with my family, doing some crosswords, trying to sleep. Um, it was a long day. Now, I saw Asagoe out in the uh, the player's area where the playground is, and she was looking up in the sky. It looked like she was really itching to get going, too. Did you sense any uneasiness in her? Um, well, we started off the match, and, and she didn't look like she was on top of her game right away. She gave me a few errors in the beginning, and it's always great when you get off to a, a good lead. And I was able to do that, get up an early two breaks, and from then it just seemed like I was able to kind of control the match the rest of the way. And, um, you know... I was anxious to play. I just wanted to get it over with today. I didn't want to have to well, come back tomorrow, so did. I'm happy we were able to get it in. Woman on a mission. Let's check out the highlights. Uh, 46 minutes, quick work. And I guess one of the first things I want to ask you about the atmosphere. You know, here you are playing at one of the biggest matches of anyone's life, and it's just not happening out there. Yeah, I think um, at this stage, um, you just want to play, and I didn't want to be waiting too much longer, and I didn't care if there was uh, five people or no people. I just really wanted to get the match over with, but... Um, you know, like I said, happy to, to play wherever and happy to get through it. Yeah. All right, we've got that slow motion thing happening again. Let's see <laughs> how you take Asagoe and move her all over the court. You guys oh, picked yeah. a better one this time. <laughs> Last time I was the one all over the place. This is what this was made for. <laughs> yeah. You made her visit just about every quadrant of the court. <laughs> yeah, it was tough. I mean, obviously on Louis Armstrong, there weren't a lot of people in such a big match with Andre and, and Federer going on that, um, you know, I think it's understandable that people would want to watch that match. <laughs> now, you, uh, as we look at match point here, you're focused on uh, who you're going to face, and you're going to face the winner of that Russian matchup that's also going on. How close are you going to watch that tonight? Um, you know, not too close. I think at this stage, you know, I know Petrova very well. Right now, Kuznetsova looks like she's winning, but, um, you know, I really think about focusing on my game and trying to play well and learning a little bit about my opponents, but really focusing on what I can do well. Now, if Jennifer can survive, do you allow yourself at all to think of what's possible here? Well, I kind of learned that that's probably best not to do that. Right. <laughs> um, be happy to talk about it if we both win on um, Friday. But right now, it's, it's pretty far away. Last year, we had a great opportunity. We both played the Belgians, and we both lost. And this year, we're both going to play Russians on Friday, and hopefully we can make it an All-American deal. I was saying with Jim Curry before, if you are going to have to sit and kill five or six or seven hours, at least there should be some good topic to talk about. And last night's Serena match with Jennifer was something to talk about. And one of the things that comes up is replay. Mm. You've always been sort of a spokesperson for the sport. What do you think? Um, you know, I'm not that in favor of it. I think that, um, you know, it's, it's technology that has to be installed on all the courts. For instance, the U.S. Open, we play on 15 or 16 courts, not just one. And I, I believe that they try their best out there. And, and sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it doesn't. I think last night was a, a rare occurrence where so many calls seem to be going mm -hmm. against Serena, especially at the end. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm a traditionalist. <laughs> Well, we talked about having multiple visits to the studio, and that would be a good thing. And so it's a good thing for you, and it's good, it's good to see you still smiling. Thanks, Thanks. Lindsay. Lindsay Davenport into the semifinals in the U.S. Open.